What is up my mathletes? This is section 3.2, the distance formula in circles. I'm going to be going through this section a little bit faster than normal, so I, I'd expect that you pause it. The reason that I'm doing it that way is because everything's already been pre-written out, so feel free to pause it whenever you want. But I'm just going to talk, and here we go. This is the distance formula, and here it is. And if you want to know the distance between two points, then I, I strongly recommend that you label them like this, just so you don't get yourself mixed up. Uh, I've seen pre-calculus, calculus students get these confused just because they're going too fast. So it's never, never a bad idea just to label them x1, y1, x2, y2, because they're the two different points, x1, y1, and then up here, x2, y2. There's the formula, and if you take these numbers, x1 is negative 2, put it here, x2 is here, y2, y1, you fill them in. The formula itself actually is very related to the Pythagorean theorem. As you can see, we further simplify and we get down to 89. Don't forget to make this uh, minus the negative into a plus, and don't forget that a negative number squared is a positive number. But other than that, it's square root of 89. If you needed to simplify that radical, you would have to, but uh, 89 itself doesn't simplify in general. Midpoints of segments. I remember this formula just because it's going to be the average of the x values and the average of the y values. So if here's one x1, y1, x2, y2, the midpoint's going to be right there. And so you take the numbers and you plug them in. Uh, I always like to label them x1, y1, x2, y2. Uh, it really doesn't take that long and it helps you stay organized really well. It helps avoid a, a, a stupid mistake. Negative 4 plus 2 well, you average the x's, and you get negative 1. Average the y's, and you get 3 over 2. Uh, graphing 3 over 2 is usually pretty difficult, so it's easier to change it to a decimal if you want. But just for reporting the answer, it doesn't matter. I always like to graph decimals, so just easier to graph. So here it is. I mean, even if you wanted to, you could draw here on this. This would very much like the Pythagorean theorem, where a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or the distance between these two points. I like to label these. The radius is going to be r, the x value is going to be h, and the y value is going to be k. That's h, k here for the center of the circle. So you get x minus 3 squared plus y minus negative 7 squared equals 5 squared. And depending on the book, depending on the addition, they will change, sometimes they'll change 5 squared to 25, that's fine. It uh, doesn't really matter that much. Uh, most people will simplify minus a negative into plus y plus 7. But there it is. All right, kitties, it's play at home time with Desmos. What that means is when I do something on Desmos, you do it too. Make sure you can show me your saved Desmos graphs when you arrive in class tomorrow.
By the way, I just wanted to say that uh, Salt Lake City is the capital of Utah. It's a great place to drive through, and that's all I've ever done, but it's incredibly beautiful. If you've been to Salt Lake City, why don't you let me know what it's like. Take care. That's your audio check. The next problem reads, example 6, find the center and the radius of the circle x squared plus y squared plus 8x minus 2y plus 15 equals 0. What in the heck is that? Well, I'll tell you, what you have to do is complete the square for x and then again for y. So completing the square involves moving the numbers over to the other side. And then on top of that, although you don't have to do it in this particular uh, problem, you might also need to divide all the terms on both sides by, say, 2, if it were 2x squared. Or if it were 3y squared, you would have to divide all the terms by 3. But it's nice, it's a little bit easier than that, so you just have to complete the square twice, independently. There's all these yellow numbers are stemming from the fact that it's x squared plus 8x. Remember, you have to take that b value, that 8, and divide it by 2 to get 4, and square it to get 16. The 4 goes down here, and the 16 goes here. This is going to be a perfect square x squared plus 8x plus 16. It follows the format a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And so you can factor to get x plus 4 squared. Similarly, you, you're seeing the negative 2. And all these green numbers uh, are derived from the fact that we start out with a negative 2. You first have to divide it by 2 to get negative 1 and square it to get positive 1. And so the positive 1 goes here, and the minus 1 or negative 1 goes here to get y minus 1. Now remember, we added 16 and we added 1 to this left-hand side of the equation, so we have to do the same thing over here. Add the 16 and add the 1. And so we get a really nice equation that's easy to graph. It's x plus 4 squared, y minus 1 squared equals 2. Now, even better to graph would be x minus something, x minus h plus y minus k is equal to r squared. And so what I do is I take it one more step further and figure out that the h value is negative 4 because it's it starts out as x plus 4. And remember, the formula requires x minus h. It's the opposite of what might, you might expect. Here, the k value is positive 1. It's the opposite of what you might expect here. And then the radius is going to be the square root of 2. Next, find an equation of the circle of center negative 2, negative 3, that passes through the point 1, 1. I looked at an SAT question just the other day that involved uh, using a f the formula for the circle in a very non-standard way, so I want to show you uh, what that looks like. You might be tempted to find the distance between these two points and make that the radius, and actually you can, that's fine, it's not, easy, not a terrible thing to do. But um, I want to show you a second way to do it also, and it would be like this h is negative 2, fine, k is negative 3, okay. And what do you do with these values? You could make them x1, y1, and plug the x1 here and the y1 here. And then when you simplify, you get 25 is equal to r squared. Of course, r is going to be 5, but you don't need to go any further. Here's an equation, x plus 2 squared. Remember, it's the opposite of what you might expect h is negative 2, so it's going to be plus 2, and then y plus 3 here squared is equal to 25. And you don't have to go any further than that. Those are all the notes. Go ahead and begin assignment 3b. I want you to copy the problem list into your composition book and then do the first problem. And I will see you in class.